What, my name? Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so I'm Juliet Bayliss and I'm a sales director at uh, Globecast UK in London. And uh, I look after the, what we call the permanent services team. So it's salespeople that manage all the services for permanent distribution. <laughs> Uh, I started in 1999 um, and uh, when I joined there was just two people in the department so uh, and it was actually analog as well <laughs> so I think the digital boom hadn't quite boomed so I guess oh my god we've had so many crazy ones we've had you know in, in the in the early days when we were launching uh, sky channels like literally three or four a month, you know, so Sky um, decided they would open up the whole EPG system and uh, you'd get people coming to you with uh, ideas for a channel, you know, because it's very seductive. You could get into television, you could buy your EPG, it's an open platform. Um, so that was always a little bit, that was always, you know, a bit, a bit crazy. I mean, ge generally speaking, you, 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 you start off with what their budget is and what they're trying to, their objective is really. So if they've, if they're a small single channel operation, um, you're not going to try and sell them some, you know, hugely sort of expensive, um, sophisticated worldwide distribution because they just won't have the budget for it. So you have to listen to the, to the client and listen to actually what they're, they're trying to get to and what they're trying to achieve. Um, but it has to be based on their budget. We have to be realistic around, you know, what they can what they can do. Um, so, and and equally with the bigger clients, you, they come to you with a, sometimes very specific needs. They want to get into a very specific market. Um, but I like to think we're quite adaptable. We have um, obviously a large company infrastructure behind us. We're owned by Orange, you know, huge parent company. But we have a very small company mentality. Uh, and we like to run things like it's our own business and I think that's where you get sort of the passion from it so being flexible in your approach and not trying to oversell I mean obviously I've worked here a long time so I must like it otherwise I would have gone <laughs> I would have left long before now what do I like about it um I like the people I think you know there's no uh culture where everyone's trying to sort of catch each other out there's a genuine feeling of everyone kind of working together and pulling together and that's nice you know it's nice to be surrounded by people that you know you you like their company and you you enjoy being with them um i think uh of the uh the rich culture of dealing with all the different business entities you know it's not boring at all um and it absolutely keeps you on your toes. You know, you never really learn your job because there's some new technology that comes through or something that you've got to try and get your head around to, to be able to talk to your clients about. So you never get bored. And I guess boredom is the thing that m means most people leave their jobs. Hmm. I mean, generally speaking, everyone wants more for less. You know, we're constantly getting asked, you know, we need to get a signal into Russia, but we don't want to pay very much money for it because it's a new market for us or, you know, we want to get this signal out there. So I think the, the requirements are much more what we call the pop up kind of culture around. We want to test a market. We want to do a, a quick channel, see if it works, see if we can make some money out of it. Um, and I think that's a real challenge for them because it goes against how they've traditionally done their business. They always used to go, come and sign up for a five year contract or something like that. Um, now they can't do that. Um, and therefore, for us on the other side of that, we're trying to adapt our offering to a much, uh, everything's much quicker, much shorter and for less money. And they can't just have like one channel now. They have to have multiple channels to deal with all the different markets that are out there. Um, and that can be difficult and hard for them money-wise, I think, to get the revenue back on it. I mean, I think it's, it's going to be much more around what wanting to do like little short tasters, so more um, snippets of content, 
Um, and it's not really it's not really the next big thing, to, so to speak. But I think it is something that we're going to see people's appetite is for and especially the younger generation. They want to see it now and they want to see short, stimulating stuff that they can they can look at, whether it's on their their phone or whether it's on an iPad or whatever. Um, and I think uh, channels the traditional broadcasting will become much more akin to that that type of dip in and dip out kind of formula um, so it's not really the next big thing because we're kind of in it now but it's trying to adapt how how we do our business to that that kind of culture and i think the uh, virtual sort of reality side so it's all all your um all encompassing so you're you're actually in in there in the moment um, is also a challenge and something that the, the kind of the technology will push us towards. Um, things around virtual reality are, are definitely um, what the younger generation are after. I mean, I know why customers should come to Global Class because I work here. We can sell, we're agnostic, you know, in, in our technology. Uh, but we can bring it all back and wrap it round with, with, with good service, I think makes, it makes a huge difference.